Hey, it's Alicia, and I'm bringing you an update on me and my knee, my MCL tear injury. If you haven't heard about that yet and you want the full story, we're going to link to that video below. That is not this video. In this video, I want to talk to you about how I am maintaining good proprioception and making sure that I'm testing all of my assumptions about pain and range of motion so that I don't get stuck. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this is about me right now and a little update on me, but I get to use this experience to hopefully help you with whatever you're going through. So as you can maybe see here, um, I can't straighten out my left knee all the way. <laughs> and I normally hyperextend my knees anyway, as you can probably see on the right, um, this left one that's where it comfortably wants to rest at the moment. So that's one of the things that I've just been noticing. Um, I am no longer on crutches. I don't think I've used them in two days. Um, so yay, that's good. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to use my own body power to get around and I'm trying to move as much as I can without actually overdoing it. So what this actually means for me um, is making small movements and playing around with my movement, whether I'm in bed or sitting at a chair or walking around. And um, one of the things that I think we get conditioned to do when we're injured, and it's kind of a self-conditioned response, like it's just automatic, is we assume major pain um, and, and we, and thus we limit our movements, right? So we kind of assume, oh no, like I better, I better brace it, right? I better put it in a brace. I better stabilize this thing. I better not move very much or only move in ways that maybe a doctor has told me I can move. Um, and I don't ascribe to those philosophies. I want to let my body tell me when and how to move. So as I've been moving the last few days, I just get really curious. Like even just standing here, sometimes I might like, you know, try to move my hips a little or squat down just to give, um, you know, my structure a little bit of a break because when I'm standing like this, I kind of feel my knee aching. Um, but then I'm going to show you how I've kind of been walking. So the right, right after I got injured, this is how my body oriented to walking. And I mean, this is pretty good. <laughs> it was a lot, a lot worse um, when I was actually injured. You know, it was like hobbling really bad, right? But it was basically like dragging this leg with me and not using it at all to walk. Um, but the thing is, there's zero pain when I walk like that. And unless I actually test the assumption that I can only walk like that, <laughs> I don't know what's possible for me, right? And I want to know what's possible. I want to know how good things can be as, you know, as soon as I can make them good. So I've been just kind of testing things, right? Like testing, actually walking. It's going to look really weird, <laughs> right? But like testing, even just turning around, can I, you know, how does it feel to turn around? And, you know, what, how much of my leg can I actually use, right? And then this is the, the cool part uh, about experimenting with your body. As you move differently, you might feel new pains. <laughs> Wait, Alicia, you just said that's cool. How is that cool? Um, so you want to know as soon as you're injured what you're dealing with because the sooner you know what exactly what you're dealing with, the better off you'll be or the sooner you can actually address it. So one of the things I wasn't really aware of immediately was that I also injured my big toe and the bottom of my foot here on the left. Um, you can't really tell anymore. Uh, it's pretty, we don't need a close up of my feet, I don't think. <laughs> but, uh, but this is, this was definitely a little bruised. And, um, and then I started getting some pain on the bottom of my foot after I drained the swelling by putting my legs up the wall. So I just put my, elevated my legs, let the blood drain. And then as soon as I got up from that experience, and I think this is like three, three days ago, I just got this intense, sharp 
pain on the bottom of my foot, like right under these metatarsals right here. Um, I felt it more on the bottom of my foot though than the top. And then I've been really aware of my big toe. So another thing I've been doing is just like moving my toes a lot. And as soon as I felt that pain in my foot, I wanted to know what is that from and what's it connected to? And I kind of, you know, when I allow the pain to talk to me, I got an impulse. And my impulse was actually to walk in an even more deliberate manner with more range of motion. Um, so instead of just how much of my leg, you know, can I use, now I'm saying to myself or asking, how much of my entire leg and foot and toes can I use? And then what's gonna happen if I use everything? And honestly, this is more, uh, you know, focused attention on these body parts than I would have normally. Um, but what I started to do was to push off of all of my toes really deliberately. And then I noticed something really interesting. I noticed, uh, when I do that, I get a sensation in my knee, like it needs to pop. Um, so I would walk very deliberately like that. Let's see if it'll do it. I might've already done it too much today. <laughs> it's getting better. Anyway, um, so it's not popping right now, but it would pop usually on the third or fourth step right up here. So isn't that interesting? I just find this fascinating. This is like, again, I'm, I'm maintaining a lot of good proprioception to how I'm moving, mind-to-body connection. So proprioception is the nervous system or brain's ability to detect your physical body in space and then conduct movement. Um, so you know where your body is in space and how to move it. So one of the things that I hear about knee injuries when I've been looking this up is, um, people lose proprioception. So they no longer know where their knee is in space. And then they don't know how to stabilize or move it or use it in rehab. Um, so the, the faster you can either, if you lose proprioception, the faster you can get it back, the better. I'm going for not losing it at all. <laughs> um, so that's one reason I haven't iced. Um, that's another reason I haven't um, braced. It's another reason I'm not using the crutches um, unless I absolutely have to. Uh, so these are just some of the things that I'm noticing as I'm kind of walking around. Um, and then I wanna show you also um, walking up the stairs. So you're gonna come, come with me over here walking up the stairs. Uh, this was kind of a fun thing, I guess, to experiment with. But again, this is, this is about testing assumptions. Um, so stairs have been really difficult for me, uh, you know, because my knee doesn't bend or straighten as well as it normally does. All right, so you're gonna follow me as I go up the stairs and I'm gonna show you uh, how I was getting up and down the stairs initially. <laughs> and the progress I've made and some of the assumptions that I've tested. Because again, w we tend to assume we're really limited when we're injured and then we don't, we get scared to test that assumption because we don't want to injure ourselves more. Um, and I'm obviously a fan of being safe when you test your assumptions. So I'm not advocating like jumping down the stairs and taking, you know, um, big risks like that. So um, you're gonna come over here and. By the way, isn't this pretty? I love, I love my plants. I love this one. Um, okay, so um, this is kind of how I've been going up is I keep this one relatively straight and this one does all the work. Actually, if you wanna see something funny, this is how I was going up the stairs uh, initially <laughs> for two days. This is what I had to do. <laughs> um, I had to scoot on my butt down and then scoot on my butt up. Uh, so I was, I was in pretty bad shape. I'm doing way better. Okay, so um, for the past few days until I tested this assumption, I've been going up the stairs, mostly using 
my right leg and I don't even necessarily need help from the rail when I do that. But man, I really notice too, and I'm just again tuning in and noticing how much of my right leg that uses to only do this. So by the way, if you want a good workout and you're not injured, just find some stairs and walk up them like that one leg at a time. Um, that's really gonna strengthen everything in the leg that you're using. Literally, I feel um, my VMO and my quad and I feel my glutes and I feel my hamstring and I feel my whole leg. I've never tried to walk up a stair like that, why would I? But this is the cool thing. So I'm like almost filing it in my mind as something I could do as a strengthening exercise <laughs> if I wanted to. All right, so I'm gonna show you the first assumption that I tested in the first new range of motion um, a few days ago, going up the stairs. I wanted to test using this leg um, instead of just using this one. So this one comes first and then I was doing this. So very gingerly, very carefully, stepping up. <laughs> and obviously you can see, you know, how far this one is swinging around. Um, but I wanna show you now that I've tested my assumption that that is the only way I can actually go up these stairs. So it felt really scary to me actually to, to step normally. Um, I was trying to do this straight and something, it was like my nervous system just went, mm, nope, don't do that. Um, so I was like, huh, that's interesting. Okay, I'm gonna get curious about it. Instead of just letting that dictate my actions um, and kind of keep me in limited movement, I'm gonna test the assumption. So here's what I did. I said to myself, what if I don't look down? Like, what if I just keep my head up and don't even look at the stairs? Because I'm, I'm noticing like just looking at the stairs, you know, obsessively, fearfully. So this is what happened when I did that. What? Like, wow. <laughs> And I, I just immediately was like, look at me, <laughs> look, look at that. <laughs> um, and why, you know, I still can't go down. This is my new challenge, you guys. This feels scary. That's okay. That, <laughs> like, I like a, a pretzel right now. Like, but that's my next challenge of assumption. Not gonna do it right now. Um, just showing you what I'm working with here. So I'm still coming down the stairs like this, but I think it's important to just note that again, all of this is being curious about pain and range of motion, testing my assumptions, noticing I'm afraid, changing something and going, what if I don't look down, you know? So why would that change anything? I don't know, I have a best guess for you. I don't actually know the answer. Um, but my best guess is, have you ever uh, tried to jump off a, a high thing into water? Um, you know, or tried to rock climb something? The longer you look at it, the thing that scares you, the more afraid you get, right? So this is my best guess, is like I'm looking at the stairs and the stairs fill my body with a little bit of fear because maybe I'm gonna hurt myself worse. So even though obviously these stairs aren't that scary, it still represented something to my brain to overcome. But as soon as my, I took my head up, I'm assuming the posture of someone confident who knows how to walk, I'm letting my body move for me instead of me thinking I know how to move my body. And when you get your head out of the way, your body actually will show you your actual limitations. So this is a perfect example for me anyway, um, or to me of just how limiting we are to ourselves in our minds. But if we take, out, take our minds out of it and let our body actually show us what our true limitations are, they're usually not where our minds want us to be. Um, because I mean, I was just like, what? Like, 
I could, I could move pretty gracefully and fluidly in a straight line up if I just lift my head up. That was really cool. <laughs> um, so I'm celebrating the wins and again, just testing my assumptions, testing range of motion. I'm doing a lot with bending and straightening as well um, when I lay in bed. And then I'm um, putting my legs up the wall to let it drain. Uh, and then I'm trying to be really cognizant of like how much I'm leaning on this right leg. Um, so that's the other thing, but that might be a topic for another day um, of just keeping aware of the compensations accruing and making sure that I'm doing what I need to do so that I don't en end up with other pain from compensations. Um, so that's what I've got for you today. Um, I'd love for you to take this and use it in your own life. So if you're currently in pain or healing an injury or perhaps even dealing with something non-physical, um, you could use this example and um, test your assumptions, test what you think your limitations are, play the what if game by trying something different and then finding out what happens and let your body actually tell you um, what's real, what's actually true. Uh, so please share your takeaways below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.